Greetings and welcome. This is Rajiv Makni on the Cell Guru Show. And can you see I'm excited? Can you see I'm talking fast? Because we've got great stuff and a lot of stuff to show you. The iPhone 13 series, all four of them are with us. iPhone 13 mini, iPhone 13. Subtle differences between the iPhone 12. There's a new pink color. There are a few changes in the camera and the battery in the processor. Base variant now starts at 128 GB. Then we'll move on to the two black guys, the 13 Pro series, new Sierra blue color, 120 Hertz display and a one terabyte storage option and of course some great stuff in the camera and then move on to the realme 8i very nice mid-range from the brand most affordable realme 8 series device still now but again big competition against it which one should you go for that and a whole lot more on the cell guru show <laughs> Let's kick things off with the iPhone 13 series and we'll concentrate mainly on the iPhone 13. I mean, mini is great, but I'll take you through. So on both, all, all phones, 20% smaller notch, but in the 13 series, 800 nits Super Retina display, the nice A15 Bionic chipset, 12 megapixel cameras, sensor shift stabilization, cinematic mode, new photographic styles, good battery life, 20 watt fast charging. I can't, I can't call it fast charging, medium charging. And the iPhone 13 starts about 70. 29,900, you get 128 GB as the base now. And the reason why I'm actually concentrating on this is now, this is the best bank for buck, I think from all four phones. It's got the right size, right battery also. A 13 mini is a great phone, but the battery life really, really suffers. You have to because the form factor is that much smaller. Now, other things in this, think of this as literally everything you need in a camera also at this price point because it's got everything that the 12 Pro from last year had and then a lot more new also has been added. So best bang for buck, 79,900 here then is our review. Iteration is a much banded about word, but by definition, iteration means repetition and repetition leads to perfection. In 2020, Apple unveiled one of the largest updates ever to the iPhone series. The phones leapfrogged forward not just in design, but also in imaging and innovative new features like MagSafe. The iPhone 13 series is by no means as massive an upgrade, but there's more here than meets the eye. This is the iPhone 13 and here's the Selguru review. Let's start with the design. Apple's focus has clearly been on finesse and improvement. From a distance, the iPhone 13 might look the same as the iPhone 12 right down to that striking flat-edged design with aluminium edges and glass both at the front and back, but keen eye users will find some noticeable changes. You will find iPhone essentials like a toggle switch to mute, a lightning port at the bottom as well as a ceramic glass on the front of the iPhone 13's 6.1-inch screen. The iPhone 13 mini brings the exact same design language to a positively tiny 5.4-inch form factor. The Super Retina OLED displays show exceptional color accuracy and now go all the way to 800 nits. We found the screen to be perfectly visible under any lighting condition. One of the most discernible changes comes to the notch where Apple claims a 20% reduction in size making it look a lot less obtrusive. Similarly, both the iPhone 13 and the iPhone 13 mini are now ever so slightly thicker. Another big design change comes to the back of the phone where the camera modules are significantly larger. Not only that, you will notice that the cameras are diagonally oriented, a small but noticeable difference over the iPhone 12. Elsewhere, both phones pack essentials like crisp sounding stereo speakers as well as IP68 ratings, making them waterproof down to a depth of 6 meters. With the iPhone 13 and the 13 mini, Apple is making a jump to the A15 Bionic chipset. It comes as no surprised that performance here is blistering fast and animations look fluid. The extra headroom offered by the A15 Bionic means that your phone will stay fresh for years to come. Like the iPhone 12, the iPhone 13 and 13 mini are 5G compatible too. On the software side, users get all the new additions of iOS 15 including an upgraded focus mode, live text to capture text directly from real-world objects as well as notification summary. There's a lot to like here. Worried about storage? This year, the 64GB base model is gone and Apple is tossing 128GB of storage as the default. You can of course upgrade all the way to 512GB variant. And all of that storage will come handy when making use of the upgraded cameras on the iPhone 13 and the 13 mini. Both phones get a 12 megapixel primary camera as well as 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. The primary camera now has a larger sensor that captures significantly more detail. In fact, this is the same sensor as on last year's iPhone 12 Pro Max, which means it also gets sensor shift capabilities for low light capture. Out of the box, the iPhone 13 and 13 cameras aim for accuracy with slightly muted and warm colors. 
Fans of more vibrant colors now have the option to use Apple's new photographic profile features that lets you adjust the camera's tuning for warmer or cooler shades. Images display excellent details and accuracy. The new sensor has also improved the low light capabilities and night mode shots look exceptional. Similarly, the ultra wide sensor gets a much better sensor as well as a lens that gives the camera improved sharpness and better detail. These enhancements extend to video capture with a high level of detail and low noise even in less than great lighting. The highlight feature this time around is cinematic mode. Apple's latest video feature lets you add a depth of field effect and set a focus point in the video. Using the power of computational photography, Apple is giving users the ability to change the focus point as well as the depth of field both during and after shooting videos. For all of Apple's claims, the results are good, but not quite cinematic. On several occasions, while testing the camera missed out on boundaries and the software depth of field effect was noticeable in less than perfect lighting. Remember the thicker size of the new iPhones? Well, it's here for good reason and that's better battery life. Apple has increased the battery size across the board and most users should have no issue getting a full day of extensive use. And the phones support wireless charging and you can make use of MagSafe as well. With the iPhone 13 and the 13 mini, Apple is making clear statement of intent. The 12 was the fastest selling phone in the last year's lineup and by all measures, the iPhone 13 looks ready to repeat the success. It builds on a solid foundation and brings drastic improvements to the camera and battery life, two areas most important to users. Price starting 79,900 rupees and shipping with double the storage, the iPhone 13 is well positioned to be the go-to iPhone for everyone. And if you prefer something a bit handier, the iPhone 13 mini brings all of the same improvements to a much smaller size and starts at an even more approachable price of 69,900 rupees. The iPhone 13 mini is designed for a user who wants the latest iOS experience in a device that easily slips away instead of becoming the center of attention. Now let's move on to our Pro series and I'm going to concentrate a little bit on each of them but I'll start off with the 13 Pro, a little heavy, 204 grams with that stainless steel build, 6.1 inch OLED display, again that A15 Bionic chipset, triple camera, telephoto, wide and ultra wide now, macro mode, cinematic mode, new color Sierra blue, improved battery life of course for both, uh, one and a half hours for this one, 2.5 hours for this one and price points now, 1,19,900 for the iPhone 13, 129 for the iPhone. So there are changes and the price point now for the iPhone 13 starts off at 1,19,900. So what do I think of these? I think the pros don't have enough going for them. I think they've done a great job. I think they are great phones in itself. But if you take a look at maybe just the 13 in itself, what's the big difference? So you will have to buy maybe the Pro Max because you want a bigger screen. But in terms of everything else, I think they've really done a great job with the 13, not leaving many reasons for you to want the Pro. Also Pro, that's the tagline that Apple is going for for this year's iPhone 13 Pro and iPhone 13 Pro Max. On the face of it, the phone packs a similar design as last year's iPhone 12 Pro and has the usual performance and camera improvements. But spend a few minutes with the phone and it doesn't take a pro to figure out that the upgrades here are much more than skin deep. So is the iPhone 13 Pro a pro phone just a name or do the upgrades live up to the promise? Let's find out in the Cellguru review. You won't be seeing bold changes on the design front. Apple already did that with the iPhone 12. However, that doesn't mean there's nothing new to see. There's the 20% smaller notch on the front display to start with. And while Apple continues the same combination of ceramic glass on the front, stainless steel rails and a glass pack, this year sees the debut of an all-new shade called Sierra Blue that is exclusive to the iPhone 13 Pro series. Over at the back, we see the first of many Pro features and that's the camera module. The three sensors sit loud and proud in an enormous camera assembly that occupies a significant portion of the back of the phone. The build quality is absolutely fantastic, however, the weight of the phones is definitely starting to creep up. Weighing in at a hefty 204 into 40 grams respectively, the Pro Max in particular will surely be noticeable over long durations of use. The thicker and heavier design is partly due to the larger batteries being used. Apple claims that users can get between 1.5 to 2.5 hours of extra use over the iPhone 12 Pro and Pro Max. In actual use, this translates to a full day of comfortable use on the iPhone 13 Pro, while the Pro Max might even get you through most of the next day. 
Up front, the two phones sport 6.1 and 6.7 inch Super Retina XDR OLED displays with ProMotion. That's Apple's way of saying that high refresh support is here and the iPhone 13 Pro series can finally support 120Hz refresh rates. In actual use, that high refresh rate panel makes a world of difference. While iOS animations are generally smooth and shutter-free, doubling the refresh rate makes them exceptionally reactive to touch input and makes the interface feel buttery smooth. Yes, the screen will automatically scale all the way down to 10Hz depending on on-screen content to improve battery life. Taking advantage of the high refresh rate panel is a blazing fast A15 Bionic chipset. Performance is optimized to a sheen and you will not notice any stutters or lag anywhere at all. However, this being a pro model, the phone has one more trick up its sleeve. While both the iPhone 13 series and iPhone 13 Pro series have an A15 Bionic chipset, the Pro models get a 5-core GPU over the 4-core GPU in the iPhone 13. While this doesn't mean much in day-to-day -day tasks, expect an improvement in GPU-intensive tasks like video encoding or editing. That expectation of professional use extends over to the storage options as well. While the base models start at 128 GB, Apple is now offering a 1 TB option as well which will be of interest to avid smartphone photographers. This brings us to the other pro feature, the cameras. The best camera is the one in your pocket and with the iPhone 13 Pro series, Apple seems to be convinced about making it as professional use capable as possible. To start with, the sensors have been upgraded across the board. The wide, ultra-wide and telephoto sensors are larger and are now capable of capturing much more light. This in effect leads to a much higher degree of detail in images. While the primary sensor captures color accurate shots with excellent detail, the jump up is more noticeable in the ultra wide and telephoto sensors that now offer much better exposure control and better color tones. Users will also appreciate the longer 3x telephoto range. But it's not just the telephoto sensor that will let you get close to your subject. The addition of autofocus capabilities to the ultra wide sensor has added one more long awaited feature macro mode. Once you get Get close enough to the subject, the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max will automatically switch over to macro mode that lets you get up close and personal. We would have preferred a manual toggle for more creative control and Apple says that it is coming in a forthcoming update. It's not just the photos. The Pro focused improvements extend to the video capabilities as well. Cinematic mode is for the most part portrait mode applied to video. Using computational photography techniques, the Pro and the Pro Max can apply depth of field effects to videos. But it goes beyond that. Apple saves the depth data to the video file itself and you can change both the amount of bouquet as well as the focus area during and even after filming the scene. It works reasonably well in good lighting and opens up a range of creative possibilities. Also new to the iPhone 13 Pro series is ProRes video support. Designed for professionals, the new video codec will let you extract the maximum detail from videos. This feature, however, isn't available at launch. Never before has Apple made the distinction between the regular iPhone and the Pro models so clear. If the iPhone 12 let 100 million plus sales last year weren't clear enough, Apple expects most users to be perfectly satisfied with the iPhone 13. The iPhone 13 Pro is for users who need more. It is designed for smartphone-first creators, professionals who want a second camera for shoots, or discerning users who want the absolute best display. Price starting 1 lakh 19,900 rupees for the iPhone 13 Pro and 1 lakh 29,900 for the Pro Max. This year's Pro lineup is a sum of all the considerable tweaks that make them the best iPhones yet. While most users will be more than satisfied with the regular iPhone 13, which has many of the same features, if budget is no constraint, the iPhone 13 Pro is without a doubt the phone to get. And now let's move on to our next story, the Realme 8i. Uh, interesting phone at this price point, polycarbonate build, which we all really like, glossy finish, which, you know, for fingerprints may not be so good. 8.5 mm thin, 194 grams, 3.5 mm headphone jack, micro SD card slot. But the good thing is it's got a really nice screen, 6.6 inch, so it's a nice big screen. It is LCD, that is something you must remember. 120 hertz, and then the big thing, the MediaTek Helio G96 chipset. Very good chipset smooth handling triple camera setup really really gets enhanced with the ai that mediatek brings in very decent camera for the price 5000 mah battery 18 watt charger priced at 13999 
Realme has time and again made a splash in the affordable smartphone segment with enticing value for money offerings. And continuing on the same trend, the company is back with yet another compelling mid-ranger in the form of the Realme 8i smartphone, which is also the most affordable device from the Realme 8 series. In comparison to its predecessor, the new 8i has come with some upgrades in the form of respectable hardware for its price. But is it worth your bucks? Let's find out in our Cellguru review. The company has employed a polycarbonate build with the back of the phone featuring a glossy gradient finish. Due to its glossy finish, the back is prone to catching fingerprints and smudges, so it's advised to use a cover with the phone. On the other hand, the handset's in-hand feel leaves something to be desired as the enormous screen demands the user to use the phone with two hands at all times. But that's not to say that Realme has completely binned the ergonomics of the 8i. On the contrary, the company has kept the weight of the phone relatively lighter at 194 grams and the handset doesn't feel top heavy either. Moreover, at 8.5 mm, the 8i is relatively sleek as well. And the camera bump doesn't protrude outwards either. And credit where credit is due. The smartphone comes with expandable storage via micro SD slot and also sports a 3.5 mm headphone jack, which is becoming a rarity these days. Up front, the Realme 8i rocks a massive 6.6 inch Full HD Plus LCD display. The panel offers a peak refresh rate of 120Hz, although Realme claims the display can smartly variate the refresh rate to better the device's battery life. The phone also has relatively thin bezels on three sides except for the chin which makes up for a good media experience. Content looks good and sharp but we would have liked an AMOLED display for better contrast and brightness levels. The smartphone is legible to use under direct sunlight thanks to a peak brightness of 600 nits. As for audio, the smartphone's mono speaker gets reasonably loud and doesn't crackle or distort the sound at higher volume levels. The Realme 8i is backed by MediaTek's Helio G96 SoC that works alongside either 4GB or 6GB of RAM. Additionally, the handset can allocate part of its storage to RAM and also offers 5GB of virtual memory. The smartphone's day-to-day -day performance is fantastic and easily a notch above its predecessor, the Realme 7i. The chipset does a good job handling most tasks, be it opening tons of apps, gaming or streaming videos. The addition of a 120Hz refresh rate makes sure to keep animations and scrolling butter smooth. Quite surprisingly, Realme also delivers good gaming performance and we did not experience any lag or stutters. As for software, the handset ships with Realme UI on top of Android 11. Unsurprisingly, the interface ships with a ton of bloatware which thankfully can be uninstalled except for some of Realme's own apps. The Realme 8i features a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel primary sensor, 2 megapixel macro and 2 megapixel monochrome lens. The rear camera performance is above par in natural light as the sensor is capable of snapping sharp images but with high contrast. The result was just about good in indoor lighting but we noticed some visible noise in darker areas. The macro sensor struggles to focus on the subject and the images leave a lot to be desired, especially in terms of overall sharpness. And we would have liked if Realme included an ultra-wide sensor which has much more practical use than a monochrome lens. The 16 megapixel front-facing camera, like most budget smartphones, delivers artificially enhanced results. Overall, it's a decent camera for its price segment, delivering usable results under natural lighting. The Realme 8i packs a healthy 5000 mAh cell, which can comfortably last a day on a single charge with basic usage. However, for charging duties, an 18W charger is supplied in the box, which is a letdown as the competition is offering much better charging speeds. Priced at 13,999, the Realme 8i is an affordable smartphone that offers good performance, a big 120Hz display and solid battery backup and it is a compelling option for buyers to consider in the sub 15,000 rupees segment but with the only caveat being its dismal camera performance. <laughs>